Welcome to yet another Power BI video. In this video, we shall see how to find the count and the details of customers that contribute to 80% of sales. Let's first look at the final outcome in Power BI Desktop and discuss the step-by-step -step method to arrive at the final outcome. On your screens is the Power BI Desktop. You can see two visuals here. This is a table visual and this is a multi-row card visual. In the table visual, you can see customer ID, customer name and sales. Customer rank is a measure that ranks customers according to the value of sales. The customer having highest sales is ranked one and so on. Sales percentage is another measure that calculates the percentage of sales contributed by each customer to overall sales. The maximum percentage is contributed by this customer and it accounts for 1.09% of the overall sales. In this multi-row card visual, you can see the overall sales, which is equal to the total here, and the total customer count, 793. Here we can see a measure, 80% sales customer count that is the number of customers that account for 80 percent of the sales that is 396 out of 793 396 is 49.94 percent of 793 so 49.94 percent approximately 50 percent of the customers account for 80 percent of sales the procedure that we've adopted is to rank the customers work out the sales percent of each customer, then find the cumulative sales percent. And the moment the cumulated sales percent reaches 80%, we look up the rank of that customer. That rank tells us how many of the top end customers contribute to 80% of sales. We have to create several measures to achieve this goal. So let's start from the scratch and see how we can do this. I've already imported the orders table, which you can see on the right pane, and created a table visual with three columns, customer ID, customer name, and sales. First, we are going to create some measures and add some of them to this table visual. To have all the measures that we are going to create under one table, we are going to create an empty table. The easy way to create a table is to click on the Enter Data button in the Home tab. So let's click on this. And at the bottom, you can see the name box wherein you can type the name. Let me call it All Measures. This column will be automatically created. We don't need it. We will delete it after we create the first measure. So let's click on Load. And you can see the table here with an empty column. So let's create our first measure, which will be the total sales measure. So let's right click on all measures, click on new measure, name the measure total sales, which is equal to sum. We shall select sales from this list. Close brackets, press enter, total sales is ready. Now we can delete this empty column. So let me click on this ellipsis and delete from model. Click on yes and it gets deleted. The total sales we calculated just now will give us the contextual sales in the sense that if we look at a date, it'll give us the total sales for the date. Or if we look at the customer ID, it'll give us total sales for the customer ID. Suppose I drag and drop the total sales in this visual, you can see that it is the same as the sum of sales here. We don't need this in this table visual, so let's remove this. Let's create another measure, the overall sales. Overall sales is nothing but the total value of all the sales in this table, which should come to 2.29 million. That would be required to find the percentage of sales contributed by each customer. So the sales, which is the total sales measure that we calculated, when divided by the overall sales will give us the percentage of sales. Therefore, let's calculate the overall sales. For that, let's right click on all measures, click on new measure. Let's name it overall sales. Let's use the calculate function. The expression in this case is the total sales measure. Let's select this. The filter context, let's put it as all selected the orders table. Let's close brackets of all selected, close the calculate function press enter. So I'm going to drag it and drop it in the columns well of the table visual and we can see in every row the total value of sales. We don't require this in the table visual so let's remove this by clicking here. 
I'm going to sort this column in the descending order of cells. For that, I can click on this arrow and you can see that the values are sorted in the descending order of cells. Now, let's create a new measure to calculate the sales percentage of each customer. So, right click on all measures, new measure. Let's call it sales percent is equal to, we are going to use the divide function. The numerator would be the total sales, which is the individual sales of each customer. Let's select total sales, comma. The denominator would be the overall sales, which is the total sales of all the rows in this table. So let's select overall sales, close parenthesis, press enter. Let's select this measure and change the format to percentage. By default, it shows two decimal places. We are fine with that. And let's drag and drop this in the columns well of the visual. We can see the percentage of sales contributed by each customer. And the topmost customer contributing the highest sales accounts for 1.09% of total sales. Let's now create another measure for finding the total customer count. So let's right click on all measures, click on new measure. Let's name it as total customers which would be equal to the distinct count of all the customers in this table. Distinct count, customer ID, close parenthesis, press enter. Now let's create a multi-row card visual by clicking on this icon. In the fields well, let's drag and drop overall sales and total customers. Let's format this a little bit. Now let's create a measure to rank the customers according to the value of sales from the highest to the lowest. For that, right click on all measures, click on new measure. Let's call the measure customer rank is equal to. Let's use the rank x function, rank x. For the table argument, let's use all selected tax function. We have two columns here, customer name and customer ID, and we are going to apply ranking on both the fields. Therefore, we have to select both the columns. Let's select customer ID, comma, customer name. Let's close parenthesis, type a comma. The second argument is an expression. The expression is the value based on which we are going to rank the customers. And that value obviously is the total sales. Therefore, we select the measure total sales, type a comma. We shall leave the value blank. Now, the order in which we are going to rank is in the descending order of sales. So, let's select descending, type a comma. The ties represent two or more customers having the same rank. If we come across such a situation, we have two options to select from either dense or skip. If we select the dense option, the ranking will continue and those customers having the same value of sales will have the same rank and the next rank will be the next number. Whereas if we select skip, the next rank would be after skipping all those customers that have the same rank. Say for instance, if three customers have the rank two, then the next rank would be five after skipping ranks three and four. I'm going to select the dense option and that completes all the arguments for the rank x function. So let's close parenthesis and press enter. Now let's drag and drop customer rank to the columns well of the table visual. We can see that the customers have been ranked from one onwards based on the highest to lowest sales. However, we find a rank one for the total column because this happens to be the highest. We don't want this. So we shall be using the is in scope DAX function to avoid this ranking. So let's edit the customer rank measure. I'm going to use an if clause. So let's type if start parenthesis is in scope is in scope requires a column name. Let's select customer ID, close parenthesis, type a comma. If the customer ID is in scope, we are going to execute this DAX formula, which gives us the rank. Let's close the brackets here. Press enter. Let me collapse this. You can see that the rank against the total has disappeared. Now we are going to create a measure that tells us how many top customers account for 80% of sales. This is slightly complex, but we shall do it step by step. So let's right click on all measures, click on new measure. Let me expand this. Let's call the measure 80% sales cost count. 
equals shift enter let's create a variable which would store a virtual table for that type var let's name the variable as summary and this virtual table would summarize all the customer ids customer names and the sales percentages so that for each customer you will have only one row which consists of customer id customer name and sales percentage let's type equals we are going to use the summarize function to create the virtual table summarize start parenthesis the table in question would be the orders table let's type a comma group by column name one would be customer id group by column name two let's make it customer name let's type a comma now we are going to create a new column for the percentage sales based on the salesperson measure that we've created earlier we have to type the column name first let's call it sales pct and this has to be enclosed within double quotes type a comma we have to mention the value that goes into this column which is this measure sales percentage so let's type square brackets and select sales percent close parenthesis this creates a table which contains customer id customer name and the sales percent now we are going to rank this table according to the sales percentage value from the highest to the lowest shift enter again let's create another variable we shall call the new table with the added rank column as summary rank is equal to let's use add columns we are going to add rank column to this summary table so the first table argument would be summary type a comma we have to provide a name for the new column let's call it rank id within double quotes type a comma we have to give an expression which would calculate the rank based on sales percentage in this case the expression would be rank x start parenthesis the first argument is the table name the table name in this case will be summary let's type a comma now we have to provide an expression the expression is the value based on which we are going to rank the summary table and that is the sales pct column that we created on the summary table just now so let's select sales pct type a comma let's leave the value blank the order would be descending because we are going to rank based on the descending value of sales percentage type a comma in case of ties we shall be selecting the dense option let's close parenthesis that completes the rank x function and let's close the add columns shift enter the next step is to create another variable which stores the new table with an added column called cumulative sales percentage we are going to create a column which contains the cumulative total of sales percentage and add it to the summary rank table start with var let's call the new table cum sales pct equals add columns we are going to use the summary rank table type a comma the name of the new column would be cum sales percentage this should be given within double quotes type a comma we have to give the expression we are going to use sum x start with the filter function filter the summary rank table comma the filter expression would be rank id less than or equal to earlier rank id close rank x let's close the filter function type a comma and now we have to provide the expression the expression would be the column that we are going to sum in this case the column that we are going to sum is sales pct so let's select sales pct close parenthesis and this completes the sum x function let's close the add columns so we've completed creating all the virtual tables required shift enter let's type return shift enter the next dax formula would be to find out the rank id at which the cumulative sales percent touches 80% all the customers above that rank id would be contributing to 80% of sales so for that let's use the minx function start parenthesis the first argument is the table so we start the filter function filter the last created table cum sales pct type a comma the filter expression is let's select cum sales percentage greater than or equal to 0.8 let's close the filter this would filter all the values in this table where the cumulative sales percentage is 
greater than or equal to 0.8%. From that filter table, we are going to find out the minimum rank ID against the point where the cumulative percentage touches 0.8. Let's type a comma and the expression is rank ID. Let's close parenthesis. This completes the tax formula. Let's press enter. Collapse this. So we've created the new measure, 80% sales cost count. So let's select the multi-row card visual and drag and drop this measure. We find that the top 396 customers contribute to 80% of the sales amount. Now let's find out what percentage of the top end customers account for 80% of sales. So for that, let's create another measure. Right click, new measure. Let's call it 80% sales cost PCT equals let's use the divide function we shall be dividing 396 by 793 the numerator would be the 80 percent sales customer count comma the denominator would be the total customer count close parenthesis press enter now let's change the format of this to percentage and drag and drop this under the fields well of the multi-row card visual. So we find that 49.94% of the total customers account for 80% of sales. In order to filter this table by the top 396 customers, let's select this table visual, expand filters, let's expand customer rank and show items when the value is less than the value that we want is 396. So let's type 397 here and click on apply filter. Let's collapse this. Now, when we scroll down, we can see that the last rank is 396. Now let's check whether the total sales of the 396 customers, which is 1.83 million, is 80% of 2.29 million. Let me bring out the calculator. We find that the result is 80.05%. So our measure has calculated the value correctly. Though this may appear slightly daunting, this is extremely useful whenever we want to use the Pareto principle. Hope you found this video useful. If you like this video, please click on the like button and share it with your friends and colleagues. Our channel has a lot of useful content. Please subscribe to our channel and help us take the number of subscribers to the 1000 mark. While subscribing, please remember to click on the bell icon and select the all options so that you shall be notified as soon as we upload new content in our channel. We thank you very much for your continued patronage and support. See you again with yet another video. Have a great day.